Welcome to Today in Space. This week, we've got to cover the upcoming launch, May 6th, 2024, of NASA's Boeing Starliner, the CST-100 spacecraft, and its first crewed flight test. That's right. The first astronauts will be flying on board the spacecraft from Boeing. Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams. Suni Williams is a local here in Massachusetts, so we're very excited to see that. But we're also going to just talk a little bit about the challenges that Boeing has had leading up to this and just showing how not easy spaceflight is, uh, especially when tiny little things go wrong. Uh, but ultimately, this is all about them being successful, right? We want them to be successful. There's a lot of people who are going to be criticizing this. I know I've been critical of it too, but we're here. It's game time. A week from now at 10.34 p.m. Eastern Time, this will be taking off from Florida, and we want those astronauts to be safe. We want Boeing to be successful here and the commercial crew program to make sure that we have the two spacecraft that us as taxpayers paid for back in the day. Uh, the SpaceX Crew Dragon was one of those as well. So let's dive into this, folks. Thank you for joining us. This is Today in Space. get started just a few reminders if you're looking for a space playlist we have you covered over on spotify the space mix by today in space studios it's our compilation of all songs that have something to do with space and science and it's a jam that's really what it's made for it's meant for if you're waiting for this boeing starliner launch to take off it's it's there for you to get pumped up we listen to it every single time we record an episode it gets us pumped up and that's what it's all about there's artists you know of like david bowie uh, but there's plenty of other artists you probably haven't heard of but it's all music that you can listen to and jam out and, and it's perfect for stargazing as well so make sure to check it out the space mix on spotify it's available for free just like it and it'll save in your playlist and you've got it there forever and if you have anything you want to add to that playlist after you've listened to it for a little bit you get the vibe let us know email us today in space podcast at gmail.com or dm us on any of our social media platforms and follow us there today in space pod on instagram and twitter today in space on tiktok and the Today in Space podcast Facebook page. But always, you can email us at todayinspacepodcast at gmail.com. So check out the Space Mix and get jamming. So the story of Boeing's Starliner is completely combined with the SpaceX Crew Dragon spacecraft, which is fully operational now for NASA and has been taking astronauts into orbit, as well as citizens into space, like the upcoming Polaris Dawn mission, but also the Inspiration4 that happened not that long ago. And to have another human-rated spacecraft in the U.S.'s fleet is only going to add to the redundancy of our ability to send humans into orbit. And what's crazy is before this commercial crew program, this is post space shuttle uh, era where we know we retired the space shuttle in 2011 and we did not have our own capability to launch astronauts into space. And the only option we had was to pay the Russians for seats on the Soyuz, which is ancient but pretty reliable technology uh, as far as space is concerned. But that's how we were getting into space. And so the NASA teams went on this commercial crew program to add funding to make these next spacecraft. Now, there was a lot of drama involved. I'm not going to lie to you. There's there's many books that cover this. If you're looking to, to dive into this, there are interviews that are out there. But it really caused a riff in the space community. And SpaceX almost wasn't even allowed to apply for this commercial crew program, which, in retrospect, would have been a disaster because... As we found out, there are certain approaches to going to space that do take longer. And there are always, no matter what approach you're going to take, there are going to be things that don't go well. And how fast you solve those problems and get on to the next stage seems to be in this new age of design heavy, design first um, engineering like what SpaceX does, that it seems to be a huge advantage. And 
you know, SpaceX and Boeing were at the same page. They were they were neck and neck at the very beginning. They started the race to get to the space station first. There was a flag put up there by Doug Hurley on the last space shuttle mission on the ISS, and the first spacecraft that would get to the International Space Station to return that flag back to Earth would be the, you know, nobody was winning anything other than uh, another contract for more missions, but uh, it was a symbolic uh, thing. And in 2020, during the pandemic, the first uh, Demo-2 mission, that was the first crewed mission to the ISS that docked, that had astronauts Bob Bankin and Doug Hurley. Uh, so cool that Doug, astronaut Doug Hurley got to go back to return that flag. I mean, such a, a cool moment in space history. But that is where, that's when SpaceX was successful, that Demo-2 mission in 2020. And Boeing took their shot in December of 2019 with their uncrewed test mission to the ISS. Uh, but things did not go well. And at first, it seemed like Boeing could have beat them up there, uh, SpaceX, to the ISS. But something happened with Starliner. There were, as this article from Space.com states, suffered a series of problems shortly after liftoff, one of which I believe was the software misunderstood where the spacecraft was supposed to be in orbit and essentially started firing all its thrusters to try and compensate. But for whatever reason, uh, that ended up putting the spacecraft into an orbit that made it too low for them to actually redock with the station and essentially made it so that they had to come back. But the spacecraft did land successfully. The parachutes, which was a big thing, a big problem with uh, both of these crew programs and, and took up a lot of time and testing to make sure it was right, understandably, <laughs> you, you need to land safely. At least on that first uh, OFT mission, OFT-1 for Starliner, they got everything but the docking correctly. This podcast is brought to you by EG 3D Printing. It is our 3D printing lab here where we bring ideas into reality. We have our Instagram page, EG 3D Printing, where you can see all the things we've made over the years. It's kind of astounding to think how many things we've made already with our 3D printers, but we have our little robotic buddies that we literally print so many different things and it's available for you if you have a project I know there's a lot of folks who are in college who sometimes those labs get busy and especially around finals time and end of the year and you've got a project and something you've got to make reach out to us if you can e if you email us from your school email we'll give you a 25 percent discount for all students um, but if you're just someone who wants to get something 3D printed or, you know, want to start your first project and you're wondering if 3D printing is the right thing for you, we will give you a free quote. And if 3D printing isn't the best way for you to make whatever you're making, we'll let you know and we'll point you in the right direction on where to go. But we're here to help bring your own ideas into reality. We've got our friends like over at Snapcaller and others who've had ideas for businesses. We've helped them prototype those first models so they, they have the idea and they have it in their hands. That's, that's the power of 3D printing is, is literally bringing an idea into reality rapidly. And it's all about this iterative approach and stuff. But, but you don't have to do the work we will do the work. We're the experts here on the 3D printing side of things, so we'd be happy to help you with your next project. So go to ag3d-printing.com. There's a form there. Fill it out. You can get a free quote from us. You can email us at ag3d.engineering at gmail.com. And of course, follow us online at ag3dprinting at Instagram and ag3dprintinglab over on TikTok. And don't forget, if you're looking for a gift for a nerd in your life, We've got a ton of stuff already designed and ready to print on demand at our Etsy shop, eg3dprinting.etsy.com. Most stuff is under $20, and if you go over the $20 mark, I believe there is free shipping. But if you let us know that you came from the podcast, we will do our best to add as much value as possible. But it's just a great thing for a gift for a loved one. So make sure to check it out, eg3dprinting.etsy.com. And now, back to the show. Two years later, uh, in May of 2022, Starliner succeeded on the second attempt, OFT2, at an uncrewed ISS mission. So no humans on board. Um, but they docked, and then they returned. 
but there's been a lot of turnover, you know, um, the astronauts that are on board, Butch, Wilmore, and Suni Williams, were not the original astronauts that were on board, and they've been shuffled. I don't know the reasons why those astronauts didn't go on board, but, um, and why they were moved around. I think, you know, you have an astronaut class, uh, and you have this whole pool of astronauts, and they all have different uh, abilities and, and, and certain things that they would be great at for different missions. And I think because of the delays, those astronauts got moved around. But I also, and this is my opinion, I also would not be surprised that there could have been astronauts that were not comfortable with the challenges that Starliner seemed to have over these years. And I think it makes sense for everybody involved that if there's an astronaut that's changed their mind about the safety of a spacecraft, they probably shouldn't be flying on that because having that doubt on board a mission is not is not going to help you. But we're we're excited for this mission to take off. You know, we the Boeing Starliner, the CST one hundred, I know a handful of people that I know personally that worked on it in some manner or fashion. And there's a lot of pride behind this spacecraft, you know, it it is kind of a call back to the Apollo eras and, and the capsule. Um, but it also is, you know, kind of the next generation of spacecraft. There's a bunch of new things on there. There's a little bit more room. It's it's kind of, they've maximized the amount of room that astronauts will have on board because you're going to be on there for a while. <laughs> and to be able to move around in something like a capsule, that's not a big, you know, uh, shuttle where you have all this room, or the the space station, where you have all this room to move around. It's it's a very cool looking spacecraft. I've been this podcast has has existed as long as this has been an idea, and so to see it launch is is very cool. Um, and more importantly, like the why for for NASA and why they have two of these human rated spacecrafts is is very well spoken in this quote from. Dana Weigel, the manager of NASA's International Space Station program, but having redundant crew vehicle capability from the U.S. to transport our crew to ISS is really important and helps us with any number of different contingency scenarios that we encounter, whether that's launching crew on board to keep us continually crewed or issues we could face on board with other spacecraft that require redundant capability for crew rescue purposes. So not only is having two different spacecraft, it kind of gives you options, it gives you other options for scenarios where, let's say, the ISS experience is something where there could be debris and you've got to, they might hit it impact the space station and it's better to bring the crew home than to keep them up there to potentially weather the storm if you will that's no bueno and we don't want that so having multiple crewed spacecraft is is huge and some more info on this flight itself the rocket that will be launching this to orbit will be the atlas 5 and this would be the first crewed launch for an atlas 5 uh, which is pretty impressive and you know the atlas 5 is a is a workhorse of the industry it's united launch alliances rocket and it's been waiting to launch uh starlining with, with humans on board for a very long time and so i know the ula team is very excited both times the atlas 5 performed flawlessly sending boeing starliner to the appropriate orbit so you know on that first launch it was the spacecraft that wasn't able to complete its second portion of getting to orbit in the right altitude this is also the first astronaut mission for a rocket in the atlas family of rockets since the mercury program in the early 1960s so for anyone involved in the atlas family of rockets and uh, that historic um, history uh, historic history what am i talking about here in the long history of atlas rockets there has been a very long time since it's launched humans and you know we're talking about 60 years essentially it's a long time so uh, for anyone who's still involved who's still around from that i'm sure it will be a glorious moment to see that come back but the long and short of the story here for this episode and this week is to kind of reflect on how important it is for America to have its own ability to launch humans into space. We, for essentially a decade, were unable and strung along by 
the only rocket and spacecraft that was rated for human space travel, which was Russia's Soyuz system. And in the world that we live in today, uh, where relations with Russia are obviously strained with the war in Ukraine, in, in retrospect, it seems like we should have been working on this much longer. But through serendipity and through many people fighting for SpaceX to have the opportunity to compete in this, we were able to start launching our own humans before we would have been forced uh, by Russia's strong arm with the Soyuz to not be able to send humans up there. And so for being able to stand up for our own beliefs, having our own ability to send humans into space is super important. I mean, imagine a future uh, at a present day where we might not have been able to keep the ISS crewed with human beings on board continuously if Russia chose to say when the conflict started that they would not launch U.S. astronauts unless we stopped giving aid to Ukraine. So in retrospect, it was not a story that any of us thought was going to be the case when the commercial crew program first started. But boy, are we lucky that we have the SpaceX teams and the Boeing teams working on this and, and bringing back our ability to send humans into space. So it's definitely something to reflect on. And I, I wish the Boeing teams luck. They have had a, a, a bumpy road up until this point, especially for a company that has been doing this for a very long time. And it just goes to show you that going to space and being successful in space is not guaranteed, even at the highest level of engineering. Uh, and especially when you're doing something new and adding new hardware and technology, just because it's newer and better theoretically does not mean that it's going to all work at the same time. And there are so many different things that tie in together and need to communicate with each other. So it's a it's a powerful message to to see them push through and get to this point. Um, so we wish the Starliner team all the best with their launch next Monday, May 6th, 10.34 p.m. Eastern Time from Florida Space Complex 41. So have a good rest of your week, everybody, and look forward to that launch next Monday, May 6th. Spread love and spread science. We'll see you next time. Have a good one.